is that at some point in time, you have to break the cycle. The generational curse stops when Jacob says, I won't let go. I don't know who I'm talking to on today. I don't know if you're listening to me passively, if you're aggressively uh, paying attention to what I'm saying on today. But for anybody listening on today, I need to let you know when Jacob makes up in his mind and says, I'm not going to let go. It is a fight not only for me, but for my future faith to come. You have to become so resilient in your fight to say, I don't care what I have to let go, but I'm holding on to faith. I'm holding on in a fight. I'm holding on in this situation to know that you came fighting me, but it is I'm going to win the victory. It is addiction will come to fight. Alcoholism will come to fight. Teenage pregnancy comes to fight. It does. You can't lose the fight of faith in this season. Your faith is a tie to so much more than just you getting freedom today. So the fight you're in is not just for you, but it is for all of your future that's connected to your bloodline. You're in a fight so big, so heavy, so prevalent it is that you cannot afford to let go. The Samaritan woman, years down the line, when Jesus walks in on the scene, I don't know if he's able to forecast in his, in his mind and say they won't have water and they'll have to borrow from people who don't even like them. Being around them, they didn't even deal with them. They wouldn't let them come into their city, come into their town to get water from their well. Jacob uh, says in no uncertain terms here, I will not allow my family, my bloodline, anybody that's connected to me to be put in a place where they feel less than because they're going to get a necessity. I know I'm not talking to nobody in the room on today because it is you like going into their stores getting beat up. You you like being under the suppression of having to ask uh, them for food stamps and for welfare and for housing. But it is my generation connected to me. Everybody in my line will be government assistance free. They, they will be food stamps free. They will not have to rely on the city nor the man to take care of them. I'm fighting for my future generations to come to say it is not another name, not another man, not another woman that is connected to my name, that's, that is connected to my bloodline will have to be in a place where it is you deal with me but you don't like me. It is I am on a different fight. He says I will not let go won't do it. I'm not letting go in this season because the fight I'm in is going to set me free. It's going to set my people now free. It's going to set my culture free. The fight I'm in is, is going to set everybody connected to me and future generations absolutely free. In no uncertain terms on today makes up in his mind and says, yeah, God, you can change my name. But it is, I need to set the record straight. I am Jacob Israel free man. I am starting the generation revolution. I'm starting the culture revolution. I'm starting the African-American revolution. It is on today. It's the last Saturday that I wake up not free. This is the last Saturday I wake up, not to my own money, my own account, my own business, my own vehicle, my own house, my own apartment complex. This is the last time I'm put in a position where I let go too easy in the fight. The fight is not going to work in your favor if you don't hold on. You never find anywhere where Jacob is fighting, but the angel says, let me go. He stopped fighting. He's not getting hit. He is just holding on. You have to hold on to faith so much to know it is that when situations look bad, I'm still holding on. When it gets too cold and I can't, I shouldn't go, I'm still going to hold on. When it is my knees hurt and I don't want to give in anymore, I still won't let go. When people talk about me, making me feel bad, when they put you in a place where it is they want to make you feel bad for having this or aspiring to be more, that it is that they want to uh, downplay your movements and your and your hustle and your grind, you have to make up in your mind, I will not let go. My faith is unwavered because the fight I'm in, people down the line that don't even know me are dependent on me. Your fight is so big, it's so prevalent, it's so urgent that I'm fighting for people I ain't never met. I'm fighting for people in the line of work, of being free, being able to resonate on the inside and say, I am a free man.
take up fights because somewhere down the line in John chapter 4 his great 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 granddaughter needs water and I know that the story runs a few different interpretations but on today imagine if she had a miss Jesus because Jacob never built the well she's able to come to a place where she meets Jesus because she is well enough the Bible never depicts for us she's a poor woman it never depicts for us she's in poverty it never depicts for us that it is that she is suffering under economic stress but she meets Jesus when she's at their well I don't know where you are I don't know what word of encouragement you need on this morning I don't I don't know the situational circumstance that you face in your life, but can I tell you on today that it is you have to build the economic status. You have to build the emotional status. You have to build the self-sufficient status of everybody connected to me. I'm building them up in self-esteem so we can come to a place of being well. I feel well, I think well, I live well, and I eat well is that I can always be comfortable. I'm not suppressed under the situational circumstance that is the ploy of privatizing in my emotions, poverty in my economic situation, poverty in my financial wealth, poverty in my social status. It is she's well, which is why she's able to meet God right there.